Jeffrey Brown has more on the vaccine and its potential impact. And joining me to discuss that is Andrew Witte, CEO of GlaxoSmithKline, which makes the vaccine. For the record, the trials were funded in part by the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation, which funds the NewsHour's Global Health Unit. Mr. Witte, just for context, what is it about the fight against malaria that makes even a 50% reduction so promising? That's far less, for example, than vaccines against uh, polio or measles. That's the most important question. And I think there are really two. It was hailed as a breakthrough in the global fight against malaria, the product of a partnership between a billionaire philanthropist and one of the world's biggest pharmaceutical companies. The drug RTSS, which was funded by the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation and GlaxoSmithKline, apparently reduced the numbers of children infected by malaria by over half. But some researchers say RTSS is ineffective without another drug patented by Glaxo. And others make bolder claims that companies are testing new drugs on African babies before they test them on European ones. So what's the truth? That's what we're attempting to get to here on Africa Today. More than 3,000 African children die from malaria every day, according to the World Health Organization. These deaths have prompted pharmaceutical companies and charities around the world, including the Bill Gates Foundation, to invest heavily in vaccines that could help prevent these deaths. One of the companies developing and testing malaria vaccines in Africa is GlaxoSmithKline. The company is believed to have received around $400 million funds from the Gates Foundation to develop a malaria drug called RTSS. It was recently hailed as a breakthrough. But a report in the journal Nature Medicine says the drug is not as effective as has been claimed. It says the drug has only worked for 30 to 50% of children and adults living in endemic areas. Other reports say that using bed nets was more effective than RTSS. The journalist Thomas C. Mountain goes further, saying that GSK developed this ineffective drug to profit at the expense of malaria sufferers in Africa, particularly children. His article alleges big pharmaceutical companies stand to gain little from a highly effective malaria vaccine. It also accuses the company of using African babies as guinea pigs by performing drug tests on them before they are approved for trials in Western countries. Africa Today now examines malarial drug testing in Africa and asks whether pharmaceutical companies are breaking all kinds of ethical codes in pursuit of profit. The benefits which have already been achieved with everything we're doing with bed net prevention and other preventative measures. So there's already a lot being achieved. This is a further incremental benefit. And then the second thing that's uh, easy to forget sometimes when we don't live in Africa is just how prevalent malaria is. A tremendous number of children are exposed continuously to this disease. So the 50% reduction leads to huge numbers of reduced cases. As an example, in this trial, if we look at a typical thousand children, Hello, I'm Henry Bonso, and this is Africa Today. It's one of the world's deadliest diseases, killing up to 800,000 people a year, of whom 85% are in Africa, and 85% of these are children aged under five. But despite decades of research and billions of pounds spent, an effective vaccine has thus far proved elusive. Until last October, when the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation and the drugs company GlaxoSmithKline claimed an historic breakthrough with the drug RTSS. A trial of 6,000 children apparently reduced the numbers infected by malaria by over half and claimed the effects could last for years. But according to recent reports, things aren't quite what they seem. While some researchers say RTSS is useless unless it's used with another more expensive drug patented by Glaxo, others make more serious allegations that companies are testing new drugs on African babies before they try them in the West. Let's discuss this Julius Mbaluto, a broadcaster and political analyst, Justin Mahunda, uh, Policy and Network Development Officer at Africans United Against Child Abuse. And on the line from Dar es Salaam, Tanzania, is Professor Wen Kilama, Managing Trustee at the African Malaria Network Trust. I'm going to start off here in the studio with you, uh, Julius. The allegations from Thomas C. Mounted are pretty strong, and he quotes an industry insider saying there isn't much profit to be made by big pharmaceutical companies from highly effective malaria vaccines. So they do the, uh, the cheap one, but it needs 
a very, very expensive one without which it's ineffective. And he's making these allegations about RTSS, saying it's ineffective without something else, an adjuvant called ASO1. And they're going to make vast sums from this other drug, this adjuvant that they uh, have the patent for. Um, does that ring true to you? Is this something that worries you? Or do you think, well, actually, it doesn't matter so long as the combination works it's better than anything else we've had before. I definitely think I'm extremely worried by this because, you know, uh, if you flash back in 2006 here in London, we had a case of the elephant man. Mm -hmm. And we are talking about a company in German called Tigineron, Tijin, yeah. which made a drug and definitely chose about six people in the UK to test it on them, paying them £2,330 yeah. for that. And definitely what happened quickly was after they had the drug on them, they began to swell their, swell their bodies, yeah. they began to complain their heads are going to explode and all. And the next thing they are in the hospital, some of them fainting. Now I'm just thinking that picture yourself being a child, you don't even have all this strength to surmount the pressure of the drug that's going to come your way. But that doesn't so, mean, I mean, that, that incident in 2006 which went around the world doesn't mean that what Glaxo, Smith Klein and Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation have done is um, unethical, uh, bears any comparison with previous horrible not. examples. Definitely not. And, and I'm not inferring that there's any kind of correlation. What I'm trying to say is that my own point of view is that any any drug to be given to a child must have been tested and proven elsewhere to work because children are more vulnerable yeah. than big people. Uh, let me take that to you, uh, Justin Bahunga. Um, you're from Africans United Against Child Abuse, so you'd be very concerned about this, a priori, because if people are abusing children in Africa, that's your business, yes? Um, but what about this? When this breakthrough was announced in October last year, were you one of those people who's, who said, at last, fantastic, they've managed to reduce incidents over a period of a year by over 50%? Oh, thank you very much indeed. It's true that we Africa is African is not against child abuse mm -hmm. and we are concerned as our primary objective is promoting the rights and welfare of African children. Mm -hmm. Now, if there is a breakthrough that malaria can be reduced, that's something you should be proud of. Yeah, but people have been looking for this for forty years. But it can't be at any cost. That's the, that's, the, that's the point. It can't be at any cost because all of us, African governments, the UN, have got the basic and the benchmark is that Article 19 is that the, every government must do all, all the care necessary or the measures necessary to make sure that the child is protected from any form of maltreatment and exploitation. Mm -hmm. I'm just looking at the overall way this was exactly. done. I mean, 15,000 children in seven African countries are participating in the trial. It's reached stage three and we got uh, the results of uh, 6,000 uh, children participating, all aged between five and 17 months, and they found uh, roughly a 50% reduction in malaria cases in that 12-month uh, period following vaccination. And we're talking about GlaxoSmithKline and the path malaria vaccine initiative. That sounds quite robust. But actually, the, the fundamental issue is making children pick guinea pigs. That's the fundamental issue. Guinea pigs, are, issue. guinea pigs are not children, they're human beings. So that's the thing we have to look at. Should the children be made guinea pigs for anything? And as I said in your introduction, they should not make African babies guinea pigs for anything at all.